Well, hey guys, who's excited for summer? <laughs> Welcome back to the Q&A. As you can tell, today I'm gonna address a highly requested topic, and that is all about bug sprays and insect repellents and tips for avoiding bug bites and mosquito bites this summer. If you're watching this, it's most likely the Friday before Memorial Day, um, and you may be planning to go camping or hiking with your family to kick off summer, so I thought this would be appropriate timing for this Q&A, since I get many questions about bug sprays and, and how to avoid bug bites. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a dermatologist, and my YouTube channel is a lot of fun vlogs in my life, as well as skincare-related content. So if this type of thing is of interest to you, then stick around. Now there are many, many, many bugs out there that are interesting and potentially dangerous to you, depending on where in the world you live, what it exactly it is that you're doing. For the sake of this video and for a uh, broad audience in general, I am going to focus exclusively on mosquitoes and ticks um, and repellents that are effective for those. Not only do bites from mosquitoes and ticks cause adverse local effects from a bug bite, but more importantly so, both mosquitoes and ticks are vectors for many, many diseases that are potentially deadly, like dengue, Zika, Lyme disease, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, West, West Nile. There is an extensive list of mosquito and tick-borne illnesses that are potentially fatal and on the rise. A little bit about these two little creatures. So mosquitoes uh, fly and are attracted to, to their host to, to bite, um, both by olfactory, meaning smell, so certain things that they smell, as well as visual cues. They are drawn to, <clears throat> they are drawn to warm, moist, humid environments dark fabrics are very attractive to them and they um, are attracted to our smells, our odors. They're attracted to carbon dioxide gas that we release. They're also attracted to um, any sort of fragrance that you may be wearing, both natural and synthetic, they like that. And uh, there is one small study showing that uh, after consumption of alcohol, people are more tasty to mosquitoes. So drinking alcohol can certainly <clears throat> make you a more likely target. There are also some gender differences. It appears as though men are more likely than women to be bit by mosquitoes. <laughs> Ticks, on the other hand, um, don't fly. They don't jump. They merely crawl and sort of, sort of, you know, seek around, okay? So they're going to be crawling up from the ground onto your shoes, onto your pants. They may be falling down from um, shrubbery above you or uh, limbs onto your hair. And they kind of cling on to things and crawl around. And then once they find a place to bite, they, they, they hunker down, they bite and they stay there and they, they attach and they take a blood meal. And they zone in to people based on vibratory cues and carbon dioxide. So they don't see particularly well, <laughs> um, I don't think. <laughs> uh, but they're following more, more of the vibratory cues to try and find a place that's stable enough on your skin to hunker down and take a blood meal. While it would be ideal, there is no oral uh, mosquito repellent or tick repellent out there. There are a lot of things that claim to be, and that, that is a false claim. Uh, garlic supplements, for example, <laughs> while they may, uh, while they may uh, repel annoying people, <laughs> they don't get rid of, uh, they don't repel mosquitoes and ticks, unfortunately. There are also a variety of like ultrasonic bands that you can wear around your wrists. Those do not repel mosquitoes adequately and they are not recommended. Um, and then there are, there are like supplements that you can take claiming to repel mosquitoes, B vitamins. No, those are not effective and not recommended uh, to protect yourself from the uh, potential deadly harms of mosquito and tick bites. <laughs> now, most Mosquito sprays, bug sprays out there are actually insect repellents, not insecticides per se. And in order to be effective an insect repellent, there are a variety of subtle nuances that you should be aware of as far as a consumer and how these work, how um, they are effective and how they are best applied, all right? In order to be effective, an insect repellent has to be 
volatile enough, meaning evaporate just enough, that what it does is the area of skin where you apply it, it creates a little, a little gaseous cloak right over that area that repels insects from wanting to attach and sting, that repels mosquitoes. As I said, mosquitoes and ticks are drawn um, largely to the carbon dioxide gases that we emit from our skin that, that provides cues to them to, hey, hey, this must be a thing that, that has blood inside of it. So let's sit there and, 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 and suck on it. And insect repellents um, need to create a sufficient little, little almost perfumey cloak to repel, to repel uh, mosquitoes and ticks. There are many, many factors that influence the efficacy of a repellent, as you can imagine. The concentration of the repellent in that volatile, um, in that volatile little gaseous cloak on the area of skin where it's applied makes a difference. And the ambient humidity is going to make a difference. The more humid it is, the hotter it is, the more likely that the, that, that the repellent is going to evaporate further away um, off of the skin and no longer be protecting the skin. It's also affected by how much the individual is sweating and it is also affected by um, the gender of the individual. While men are more likely to be bit, uh, bitten by a mosquito than a woman, a woman is less likely to, uh, to be protected uh, than a man from certain insect repellents seems to be there's some differences. And then just how attractive you are, you know, if you've been boozing and cruising and, and spritzing yourself with bath and body works, um, stuff in between, you're, you're a little bit more tasty and so that can influence how effective the repellent is. And then the concentration of the active ingredient in the repellent is also important. It's important not so much uh, in that higher concentrations of insect repellents are more likely to repel. It's merely a fact that higher percentage strengths of insect repellents in the, in the, in the vehicle are more long lasting, okay? And so they, they um, keep that little volatile cloak there a little bit longer. Insect repellents are gonna wash off with rain, with sweat, if you're removing clothing. The other factor that I mentioned is temperature. For every 10 degrees, increase in the temperature outside, the ambient temperature. It's estimated that your the duration of efficacy of the insect repellent will decrease by about 53%. So hotter, more humid uh, conditions, which are very, very <laughs> mosquito friendly, tend to, to be factors that decrease the efficacy of insect repellents. The other thing that you should be aware of is that insect repellents, while they make a little veil above the area of skin that you apply them, they don't, they don't provide you with a, an invisible shield uh, of protection. And I think a lot of consumers um, um, are under the impression that if they just spray themselves with it, they're fine. But you need to, to spray exposed skin. So say for example, you only spray the skin of your arms and you're walking around with shorts, mosquitoes and, and ticks will still be more than happy to snack on your legs. So every exposed uh, skin surface needs to receive the uh, insect repellent. Now, there are a variety of insect repellents out there that are approved for repelling mosquitoes and ticks. Probably the gold standard is DEET. Um, this is one brand that we have here in the United States called OFF. This product contains 25% DEET. DEET is an insect repellent that has been around since 19, oops, excuse me, as I threw it on the ground, since 1957. Um, and it is a broad spectrum insect re repellent. It is effective against many species of insects, both mosquitoes, ticks, chiggers. It is, it is effective against many, many insects. So it is ideal in that manner and that it, it gets, you, gets you more than one critter and it has a remarkable safety profile. I will just go ahead and say that because I know a lot of people get very apprehensive about using DEET and try and avoid DEET. On the contrary, I would say DEET has the most safety data behind it. It is the most effective repellent out there for repelling mosquitoes and ticks that can carry potentially life-threatening diseases. We have over 50 years of human safety data with DEET with no adverse effects to human health as far as 
causing malignancy or being mutagenic or any kind of cardiotoxicity is very, very safe in people. We also have many, many, many animal studies that also corroborate that. It is incredibly, incredibly safe. I think the area of concern that people get the most apprehensive about are reports of neurotoxicity with DEET. And that has been vetted and, and reviewed extensively. There have been, in the, the many, many years of DEET, being on the market, there have been approximately 50 cases of neurotoxicity reported in association with DEET use. Um, three of those did include death, and in those three individuals who died, they died from intentional ingestion of DEET, not from using DEET as an insect repellent applied to the skin. There are some reports of seizure-like activity in children using in association with DEET. However, those case studies, those individual cases, subsequently were followed and monitored and come to find out there was no association actually demonstrated with the DEET. Um, those individuals may have had, appeared to have an underlying seizure disorder or an underlying other reason to have a seizure outside of the DEET. So it is more than safe. It is safe in children. You can find many DEET containing uh, bug repellents out there. There are lotions, there are sprays. I will list many down below. Uh, what you should understand as a consumer is that they vary in the percent of DEET within the product. So the one I held up that I threw on the floor here, the off, is 25% DEET. Uh, and, you know, you can find anywhere from 5% to uh, upwards, I think, of a, even 100%. Higher percentages of DEET are not necessarily more effective, but they are more likely to give you more long-lasting uh, repellent protection against mosquitoes and ticks, simply because there is more DEET within that, meaning that you are less likely to have to reapply the insect repellent as frequently. So I would say for casual everyday use or like, you know, while you're out and about, uh, choosing a DEET containing repellent with a, about 35% DEET is, is, a, is a good choice. Very safe. Um, you want don't apply it underneath clothing, however, because that can trap it to the skin and just uh, increase the potential for irritation. Um, and you really don't need it underneath, you know, in, in areas of, on areas of the skin that are protected by clothing, by fabrics. And then you never want to apply DEET to a cut or to an open wound, because um, that can increase the chances that you will absorb some systemically, potential adverse effects. And it's also compromises the efficacy of the DEET to apply it onto a braided skin. So only apply it on intact skin that is exposed. The other thing you should be aware of with DEET specifically is that there are a variety, unfortunately, of products out there that are formulated to contain both DEET as well as sunscreen. And um, I thought those were off the market, but I recently saw some in the drugstore when I was in there looking at body sunscreens in a video a while back. And so what you should know is that those are not great because you need to be reapplying sunscreen a lot more frequently than you would need to be applying an insect repellent. Um, you know, most insect repellents, most deep containing insect repellents, um, say at 35% uh, deep concentration, that will give you about six hours of protection. However, sunscreen needs to be reapplied every two hours, so combining the two is not a good idea. You don't want to keep applying DEET that frequently. Also, combination sunscreen repellent products uh, have shown that insect repellents containing DEET actually can degrade and compromise the SPF of your sunscreens, so be aware of that. The other thing you should know about DEET is that it can degrade plastics, so be very careful uh, with your glasses, with your eyeglasses, um, plastic containing uh, materials like your you know, camping supplies and equipment. Uh, be aware that DEET containing bug sprays can degrade those plastics with time. And depending on the percent strength of the DEET, it's going to guide the frequency. So look on the, on the bottle, it will tell you how frequently to reapply. Generally, um, at about 30% DEET concentration, again, depending on your environment, that will offer you about six hours of, 
of protection, whereas a 10% containing DEET repellent will offer you somewhere in the ballpark of one to two hours. Again, it, it all depends on how much you're sweating, how hot it is outside. And while you want to apply it to all exposed areas of the skin, what you should be aware of is that you don't want to get it in your eyes. It can be very, very irritating in the eyes and you don't want to, you don't want to get it in your mouth. You don't want to ingest it. So you can spray it on your body in, in the spray forms, that's fine, but don't spray it on your face. Instead, spray some of it into your hands and, and rub it into your face um, and neck because you just don't want to be spraying it, spraying it on your face. For your young children, don't apply it to their hands, however. Apply it to your hands and put it on their little faces, but don't apply it to their hands and have them do it because you run the risk that they will put their hands in their mouth and ingest the DEET. After you apply the DEET, um, you know, if you're going to be eating, um, definitely wash your hands um, and try and avoid putting your hands in your mouth so as to not ingest it. But if you're going to be out and about with your hands exposed, then you want DEET on the surfaces of your hands. Outside of DEET, there are some other insect repellents that are approved for repelling mosquitoes. One of them is an ingredient called IR3535. That can be found in Avon products and Sawyer products. It is in the concentrations of 7.5% to 20%. It's safe for children two months and older. And repellents containing 7.5% of IR3535 will offer about anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour of mosquito uh, repellent protection. Um, however, it is not as good as DEET. Bottom line, the comparison studies show that DEET is far, far superior and DEET containing products often provide more long lasting re uh, repellent protection. But the IR3535 can repel mosquitoes effectively if that is your preferred, uh, preferred product. You just need to be reapplying it a lot more frequently than you would a DEET containing repellent. The other um, ingredient that uh, was approved in Europe first uh, in the 19, around 1998 is uh, papyridine derivatives or um, a picaridin. 20% um, picaridin containing repellents will offer about seven hours of protection, whereas 10% will offer about five hours of protection. Um, in Canada, it's uh, I think more commonly called icaridin, and it is not recommended for children younger than the age of six months. Unlike DEET, uh, however, picaridin will not degrade your plastic, so it is another option. Again, not as effective as DEET, but uh, is, an, is another option. And then lastly, because everybody wants to go all natural, all right? So the only natural ingredient that uh, is approved as a mosquito repellent by the Environmental Protection Agency, and you could feel somewhat comfortable using, is lemon eucalyptus oil. Lemon eucalyptus oil um, is uh, offers somewhere in the ballpark of two hours of, of, of repellent protection. However, it can be very irritating in the eyes, uh, so it is actually not recommended for children three years of age and younger to use the um, lem oil of eucalyptus, lemon eucalyptus containing uh, repellents. So be very, very cautious. I see, you know, in Whole Foods, these like deep free insect repellents that are a bunch of essential oils and really just fragrance, not effective repellents and sends a dangerous message that these are safer and better, and they're absolutely not, okay? And mosquito-borne diseases, tick-borne diseases can and are deadly, all right? It's not something to play around with and second guess. I would discourage you from doing natural essential oils as insect repellents. <laughs> I mean, it's your health. As far as, as far as that goes, people will ask me, well, what about citronella candles? Are they helpful? Um, it comes to find out citronella candles can, can somewhat uh, keep mosquitoes away. Uh, there's a study looking at citronella candles versus regular candles versus, I think, no candles. Citronella candles cut down the number of insect bites by about 43%, mosquito bites by about 43%. That's pretty good, you know? Um, so I'm not mad at the citronella candle. I wouldn't use that exclusively, though. It's not, gonna, it's not going to offer enough. Uh, come to find out though, just, just burning a candle will cut down the number of uh, mosquito bites by about 23%, at least in this study. Probably because, uh, you know, the smoke from the, the candle uh, and the, the flame, you know, it deters them. They don't smell your smells as, as much 
Then the last uh, ingredient that I will talk about is something called permethrin. Permethrin is, um, what is it present in this product that I um, have and use called Repel? Permethrin is not a um, insect repellent, it is an insecticide. And um, it works well for repellent, for, um, for protecting you against ticks. It doesn't repel them, but it will kill them. The best thing that you can do for yourself, particularly if you are going out camping, you're gonna be out by the lake, we've got mosquitoes and ticks that you're dealing with, you spray something like this on your clothing, on your shoes, on your backpacks, on your tent, um, to, to keep them away, all right, and to kill them if they, if they try and come near you. And so I am a huge fan of these. Uh, my recommendation, particularly if you are a outdoorsman or outdoors woman, and you do things like fishing, um, and you know, you're gonna be camping, hiking. Uh, I strongly would encourage you to spray your clothing with a permethrin containing um, insecticide, as well as wearing a DEET containing insect repellent on uh, exposed surfaces of skin. Together, this is, this is a great combination for, for really, really keeping you safe against ticks and mosquitoes while you're out enjoying summer activities or you know, other activities where these, um, where these kinds of critters are, are prevalent. Like I said, ticks crawl, crawl around. So wear long, long pants uh, and tuck your pants into your shoes. I know, very, very, very couture, but that is really the best thing to do. Uh, you know, spray the shoes if you can with the permethrin um, insecticide. Spray your pants with it and tuck the pants into the shoes. That way the, um, the ticks can't fall down into your shoes and crawl up your pant leg um, and, and attach to your skin but it looks like my battery is just about out. Um, so that is everything that I wanted to cover in today's video. Leave your questions down below. I would you know, like to continue to do a few more Q and A's here and there throughout the summer in particular about uh, bugs and ticks. Um, you know, I get a lot of questions about removing ticks. I, how to take, you know, there are a lot of old, old wives tales about removing a tick. Um, so I'd be happy to do some more um, Q and A's around <laughs> insects and bugs. If that's something that you're interested in, leave your questions below. But I hope this video was helpful. Enjoy the summer. I know I'm always a Debbie Downer when it comes to <laughs> sun protection and, and these kinds of things, but really have a good time. Just keep yourself safe, keep your family safe. Don't be fearful of DEET. It is a very effective repellent. Um, and hopefully the tips in this video uh, empower you to be able to use it effectively and to understand how it works better uh, to keep you and your family safe. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.